Hi, I'm Andrew Skula from Skincare TV. And in this segment, I want to talk about preservatives. Now, skincare products are primarily made from natural resources. Anything natural is going to be carbon based because carbon is the basis of life, one of the essential elements for life on this planet. But carbon is also a yummy ingredient for microbes. So all those things that can cause problems on our skin will love to live in skincare products because skincare products are full of carbon. Wonderful, wonderful uh, ingredients for the skin, but also we have to stop the bacteria and microbes from enjoying it as well. As you know, fresh food can decay, whether you leave it out on a countertop or even if you have it in the fridge. Decay is a natural process on this planet. We want to try and eliminate the potential of decay in your skincare products so that you can use them safely on your skin. Now, there are ways that you can tell if your product is going off or decaying. One of it is in terms of smell. Is there an aroma which is a sharp aroma? Is it musty? Does it smell rancid? Those are all indications that your product should not be used and it should be thrown out. Another one is color. <clears throat> Has it changed color? If it changes color, it should be thrown out. And another one is the feel. Does it feel a slightly different consistency? Is it drier? Um, if that is the case, it should be thrown out. Now before those physical elements um, appear, it could be that microbes are growing in your product. So what is going to make you feel comfortable and feel secure about putting skincare products on your skin? It's going to be preservatives. Preservatives are essential for enabling that product to be used safely and also giving it a length of time that it will be useful to you. Um, you don't want to have to throw out a product within seven days because it doesn't have good preservatives in it. You basically want to have a product that what we call has a shelf life. Um, and you also want to have uh, your products in an environment that helps with the preser preservation of it. For example, a hot, steamy bathroom is not an ideal place for your skincare products because hot, steamy bathrooms are great environments for microbes. You also don't want to leave the lid or the cap off your skincare products because that does two things. One is it allows oxidation of the product. And second, it allows entry of microbes into the product. Third thing is, make sure your fingers are clean if you're going to put them into your jar of moisturizer because you could be transferring bacteria from one surface into your skincare products if you don't keep your um, fingers clean. The, probably the best environment for your skincare products is a cool environment, like your fridge. Um, as you know, food in your fridge decays a lot slower than food left out on the counter. And that would be the case as well with skincare products. You can keep them a lot longer if you keep them in a cooler environment. So without preservatives, skincare products would have to be made as single-use items in very small containers. They'd have to be made in sterile factories that have very short shelf life and basically would cost enormous amounts of money. And most of us wouldn't be able to afford them. So preservatives are really good for the way that we want to use skincare products and to make sure that they're safe on our skin. Now there are different types of preservatives that are used in formulations of skincare products. There are antioxidants. Antioxidants are there to preserve the freshness of all the other ingredients in there. Um, these antioxidants would be things like vitamin E, vitamin C, citric acid, uh, PEG-8, um, Oxynex K, as well as BHA and BHT. Then another uh, group of preservatives would be humectants. Now what these do is they hold water in the product to prevent it from drying out. Um, that's an important thing, otherwise a dried out product is not going to be effective and you have to throw it away. The types of ingredients that are put in for the purpose of keeping the water in, in the product would be things like glycerin, 
sorbitol, <clears throat> as well as propylene and butylene glycols. Another area of preservation is the pH adjusters and emulsifiers. Now this is, sounds a little bit more technical, but pH of it means that it must stay in that pH range, either acid or alkaline, in order for those ingredients to be effective. And emulsifiers is where oil and water-based ingredients can be brought together and hold together. They don't separate out. And that's one of the important things um, that some of your salad dressings are vinaigrettes, for example. You've got to shake them in order to get them to mix. A lot of other salad dressings have already been pre-emulsified and they stay together as they are supposed to. Now the types of ingredients that will be used as pH adjusters and emulsifiers will be things like TEA, um, sodium hydroxide, steric acid, as well as glycerol sterates. Those are just some of those that you would see in your ingredients list. Another important area is what we call chelators. Chelators prevent mineral contamination and oxidation of minerals if minerals are in that formulation. An ingredient that is used to preserve minerals in your formulation would be something like EDTA. Then another area is color and fragrance. Those can you know, diminish quite uh, rapidly in formulations. So very often sunscreen ingredients are put in to reduce the um, discoloration and um, fragrance diminishing of those ingredients. And the types of ingredients that are used there are benzophenone 3 and benzophenone 4, very small amounts of them. Probably the most important aspect of preservatives is to prevent microbial growth. Now microbial growth could be bacteria, could be mold, could be fungus. And we need to make sure that this product is safe for you to put on your skin. The kinds of ingredients that would be used in that would be things like ethyl hexyl glycerin. It could also be a glycerol caprolate. It may be parabens. It may be a phenoxyethanol. It may be a pure alcohol. It may also be something with a very big name like methyl isothiazolinones. All of those are what we call antibacterial, and they are, give us a broad spectrum of bacteria and molds and fungus that they protect against. Parabens um, are things that are used less frequently in skincare products now. There are some people who are adamant that they are really, really bad for you, and other people who say that they really are not bad at all. In fact, they don't even penetrate the skin. It's up to you to decide, but basically most um, skincare companies use fewer and fewer parabens. If you see parabens in there, they may be the weakest ones, which would be methylparaben, ethylparaben, and propyl paraben. Most importantly, in talking about that whole aspect of what goes on your skin, remember that your skin is a barrier. It's there to keep things out. So it's more important to worry about what you put into your body by way of what you eat, because your digestive system is a direct route to every single cell in your body. So that is critical for you to remember. There are some natural preservatives which people like to put in. <clears throat> now natural preservatives tend to have a more limited spectrum of preservation in terms of the, the spectrum of bacteria, molds, and funguses that it is protecting against. And they may have a shorter term um, of effectiveness. A lot of these natural um, preservatives can have strong odor and can be very irritating on the skin. Think of a citric acid, like a lemon juice, which is very antioxidant rich and antibacterial, but you put a lot of le lemon juice on your skin, you will get a very, very irritated skin. Other ones that are very irritating would be things like tea tree oil, oregano oil, peppermint, menthol, uh, benzoic acid from cranberries, cinnamon, uh, even grapeseed extract. All of those are used as natural preservatives, but you cannot use too much of them because they would be very irritating and particularly large amounts of them be very irritating in people with sensitive or rosacea type skins. So if there's some preservatives that you don't like, it's not just a simple case of, oh, the manufacturer can simply replace that with another one. 
it's a big picture thing of preservatives working together to give you broad spectrum uh, protection and they have to be in within certain pH ranges. It's a, it's, it's a hugely complicated um, aspect of science trying to keep all these ingredients together. And it's very similar to if you are baking at something you have to have everything in the right proportions and you cannot just mix it up. You, you won't get the right kind of um, outcome if you're just throwing in whatever ingredients you want. So there's no one single preservative that is used in any skincare products. Normally it is a system of preservatives to give broad spectrum coverage and that is to give you the safety and uh, feeling of security that you can put something on your skin and not break out or have an irritated skin which could be a rash or anything even worse from that like a dermatitis.